Okay, firing up GNU radio right here, GRC, and I already have a flow graph going, but let's first start with uh, how to make a flow graph, okay? Up here, these are just variables that you can just type on in. I have a good amount of variables. Some of them are alternating variables w during the runtime. You'll see in just a moment. First, these options right here, I'm going to show you the difference between Qt and uh, Wx. Wx is uh, something that's failing right now, and during the next updated version of the GNU radio, Wx will no longer be supported. You only have the option for uh, Qt, and uh, I believe that's it. So right now I'm using Qt, but uh, due to the fact that uh, uh, what was it? Gpredict uses Wx. We're gonna need to keep uh, Wx and prevent an update from happening in GNU radio. So that's one of the dilemmas that we're going through right now in our team. Now, there's something called a source, which is the beginning of a flow graph. And we have something called a sync, which is the end of a flow graph. Uh, this probe right here, that probe signal is actually uh, a variable uh, input to my function probe right here. So the input of this aug augmax pretty much gets the uh, maximum input, goes into this probe, ver probe signal, and it goes into my probe uh, variable. But first, let's start making our first uh, uh, flow graph, and you can start off from there. So let's create a new flow graph right now. It's untitled right now, but uh, I set mine for QT, GUI. Uh, this is my variable for sample rate. All these things are going to have a sample rate, and depending upon your computer's processor, this thing can go as high as you would need to be. So pressing Control F, I unlock this search bar. Type in source, and you can find all the sources, all the beginning of a flow graph. But I'm going to type in signal source, and I have myself a signal source. If I press up or down with the uh, thing highlighted, you can change its type output. Now the types much, uh, must uh, match with each other and there are ways to convert types within your flow graph. But first, let's take a look at what the types are. Going into our help, types. This pretty much shows you all the different types that you got. So right now over here, this output, is uh, float 32, pretty much uh, uh, just a bunch of decimal numbers. Now, let's show you what throttle do. Throttle is pretty much a limiter factor in your uh, in your radio. Uh, without this, your processor is going to run as fast as possible. So that's why we're going to need this guy. We're gonna need float. You can change types like that by double clicking and pressing enter. Or you can just highlight it, press up, down, up, down, just like I did before. And now the throttle is a limiter so that your processor won't use every all of its resources on just running the uh, graph, okay? So playing this, in order to connect them, you press the output and the input and you just get it. Press or vice versa, press the input, and then press the output, and you just get them connected. So you notice that this thing here is red. It's because uh, there's an output that's not connected to anything. So uh, another th factor that we can do is we can move them, and the flow graph uh, moves along with it. Now let's create our actual flow graph, OK? I'm going to delete that by pressing delete on the, uh, when I had the arrow highlighted, add, that's my adder right here. I'm just gonna change this up by pressing down real quick. Control C, Control V to copy. Now let's change this frequency to uh, 22 kilohertz, for example. This is just a made up example. And let's make this 11 kilohertz. So I'm just going to add these two cosines together and have my output go through the throttle to prevent my CPU from 
uh, burning up or whatever it does and I'm gonna need a sync so let's see what's my sync source again audio audio sync I think it was and it should come out through my audio speaker so once I have two signal sources added with different frequency you should hear some funny noises I think uh, save it onto my desktop name it test.grc saved ouch didn't realize it was going to be that loud but yeah you get the idea now let's look at some uh, useful syncs okay uh, we got time sync using qt not wx because we're using qt right here use time sync right here highlight it press down to change its type so that the types would match types have to match you can't have them unmatching press play and here's our two signals added up Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think it's because our sampling rate is too low. Let's make it uh, 64 kilohertz. See if that does anything. And give us a higher resolution. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe it is aliasing a little. Yeah, it's aliasing up quite a bit. Let me change this to. Following Nyquist theorem, this should be like at least two times this, okay? But in reality, since it's uh, digital processing and a lot of things occur onto it, it should be much more than that. I experienced some errors on this before, so uh, 64 kilohertz should be enough for one and two kilohertz. Oh, there we go. Okay, so these are the two signal sources added up in real time. Much better resolution too. So. Once that's done, uh, we got our time sync going. Another useful sync would be frequency sync. Where are you? QT GUI frequency sync. Press down to change its type. Remember, we need this in order to prevent our processor from burning up or uh, using all of its resources. And here's our two frequency plots, one over here and the other guy right here. So that's how you get your frequency plot going. And one more thing, let's see, what was it? Waterfall? Something that Jason always mentioned, waterfall. QT. Press down to change its type. Connect the two input output. And here's your two frequency going through. Uh, waterfall is just another form of a frequency diagram, except uh, the waterfall has a time plot going. So you can see the change of frequency with respect to time. That's pretty much it. And uh, let's see, some other stuff that's useful is like some math operators, like uh, sub. You can subtract this stuff, press up or down to change its type, to match the type. You can change this guy. You notice that when the types are different, you get a red arrow. He doesn't like that, so change them back into the same type by pressing up or down on the arrow key. Uh, what does the left and right do? It just changes its position by pressing right or left on your arrow key while uh, the thing is highlighted. And here's another cool thing. You can disable or enable it, kind of like plug in and plug out. Once it's disabled, uh, this is no longer a factor in the flow graph. So it's just there, but not active. You can re-enable it by pressing E or pressing this button, E, or disable again by pressing D for disable. Or you can just delete it by pressing the delete button on your keyboard. And uh, that's pretty much all I got. You notice how the sample rate is pretty important, how it needs a high sample rate for it to have a high enough resolution or a plot. And one more thing, if you have QT here, let's say we got WX going for us, QT is not going to work. 
you're going to want a WX. Uh, well, the WX letter less than it. Nah. There we go. FFT sync. These two are actually quite equivalent with each other. Uh, so he's going to want. A WX uh, sync or any other WX form for that to work. And when you have QT going, your QT is going to work, but your WX is not going to work. See, he doesn't want you to do it, so that's why he has this button where you can see your errors going. That WX, he doesn't like that. Uh, what else is there? Uh, that's pretty much all I can think of for now. All right. Well, see you later. I'm going to try to finish.